who are from the academic world, which is that our intervention, such as it is, does not count for too much. Uh, unless direct writing is made available to us through the medium of publishers. I'm thinking of a pre-1992, 1992 being poison brain, uh, or pre-90 situation in which there was no Korean black swan to bring us Korean government then, to bring us poison bread, uh, or that other publishing house which brought us Illinois Zillion and Murtra Ganan, uh, Marathi poetry in English translation, or OUP and Nabayana and uh, Stri Samya. Had they not been there, where would we in the academic world have been as far as the study of Dalit literature goes. So, uh, I'm not trying to say he who plays the piper calls the tune, but what I'm trying to say is we cannot do anything at all in the world of academia and the sooner we realize it the better without looking at the production, the production mechanism behind uh, uh, the introduction of Dalit literature in the classroom. Okay. Now, yesterday, uh, in the afternoon session, Urvashis kind of acknowledged this by saying that the publisher tries to respond to taste, but that is not enough. Tries to respond to need, but that is not enough because the publishing houses ultimately, like it or not, are commercial ventures. Okay. So they also have to see what will sell and what will not sell. What I'm trying to say then is academic intervention has its limits in promoting or make possible the study of Dalit literature. Really, in this hierarchy which I'm going to draw, counts for very little. I'm sorry to say. Publishers are more important because they make that academic material available to us, available to our students. And without that, we could not prescribe or make syllabi which has certain academic inputs. But even more than the publishers is what is happening outside in the world at large. You call it, for want of a better term, I call it the public sphere. What is happening? Now, I have been in this university all my life, first as a student and then as a teacher. And I would say the turning point in, uh, or, or a significant turning point in the shaping of the mood as far as reading Dalit or reading caste is concerned was the Mandel Commission, the recommended the decision of the government to implement the Mandel Commission recommendations and the absolute ferment it created in a university like ours. Once the government decided that uh, reservations uh, which had been recommended for the other backwards cars would be implemented, literally and metaphorically our university went up in fire. There were, there were people sitting on dharna, people marching through the streets, students, upper caste students marching through the streets, upper caste <laughs> students saying they were victims, they were, they were setting themselves on fire, so many self demolitions happened and so on and so forth. But behind every cloud, as they say, there is a silver lining. The silver lining was that those who had been disenfranchised, and I'm not just talking about the OBC constituency, I'm talking about the Dalits, realized that they had better gear up. That they too needed to organize, they too needed to mobilize, and they too needed to interrogate the orthodoxy of merit being compromised in celebrations, that there was a mood shift, a very significant mood shift, and an awareness of Dalit constituencies, an awareness within the university of, I would say by this time, second generation Dalit students, okay, who had come in, that 
they had also learned to better learn to speak for themselves. They had begun to take, perhaps, perhaps they had begun to take the, the, the presence of affirmative action on paper for them too much for granted. And they were, they were not really justifying affirmative action measures or trying to speak for more perfect implementation of academic uh, uh, affirmative action measures. Okay, so that is the time I remember in this university at least, we found Dalit student organizations, Dalit faculty organizations cropping up from the other side of the fence and trying to say what's this about merit that is being talked about, compromise of merit because of reservations. When we had the have months strike by African American students asking for African American studies program. Okay. So nothing as drastic as that unfortunately happened in Delhi University or any other university in India. But suddenly Dalit students and Dalit faculty were waking up and saying, we want to learn about ourselves. Why don't our courses speak about ourselves? Why don't our programs represent ourselves? And that is the point that publishing houses realized that there was a constituency, uh, not a new constituency, or, but a newly aware constituency, newly self-aware constituency that could be addressed. And being savvy, savvy profiteers that most, the, 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 the emergence of a second or third generation Dalit constituency, students and faculty, who said, we've been always on paper as the reserved people, as the SCST lot. Okay. And we've been admitted and given our rights very, very grudgingly and very, very condescendingly. Now we're not going to take that. We, we are going to ensure that we get, get ourselves represented, not just in the university population, but represented in what we learn and what is taught to us. Okay. And also a little later, about seven to eight, eight, uh, eight years or maybe ten years later, the debate about racism and casteism, the Durban Conference, remember? Uh, that was a debate which, uh, uh, which was quite intense in the public sphere. Now, all that brought into existence a Dalit public sphere. A Dalit public sphere. And in the wake of the emergence of a Dalit public sphere, the, the wake up of publishers to a new constituency, a new constituency of readers. And when the publishers jumped into the game one after the other, in sometimes in sheer competition with one another, okay, then you find academics find a role for themselves. I'm sorry, Raj, I don't mean to uh, understand. And then people like me are asked to edit a OUP text, listen, listen to the films or Raj can bring out his book, Dalit Personal Narratives, and so on and so forth. So, if, if this might seem very, very self-demeaning, but there it is. Uh, I see our role in the publishing of Dalit and Adivasi, uh, in, in the publication of Dalit and Adivasi literature and art as a subsidiary one. Thank you. Uh, actually, you know, I was uh, telling Yom that uh, they happen to be my neighbors, neighboring states. I passed through their states, so I feel that they are very close to us because uh, when Odisha was divided during colonial, uh, you know, that uh, time, uh, we were part of Chhattisgarh, and they happen to be, you know, that uh, so from my states. Anyway, so I can't speak in Hindi properly, so I will try to explain what I am saying. Um, see, I partly agree with uh, Thapan and partly not, uh, uh, meaning uh, the kind of, you know, that uh, uh, self deputy you know, that uh, because uh, I see a panel here, uh, very uh, different and divergent, you know, that uh, two tribals, artist and a Dalit professor happen to be from Delhi University, one of the largest uh, university in India by fault or by accident. Uh, Anand is uh, publishing Navadana, yet it, uh, that's the only uh, the publishing houses. And if you see every time, you know, that you buy a book, the 
you know that bag they gave you, you know that the cost. Now we ran, we didn't make bags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it said anti caste in Adam Brown. Yeah, anti caste. You know that. So, and um, so, you know that uh, by Paul Tegan, Adam is Brahmin, and Tapan, of course, you know, they're also Brahmin. So, you know that let's, uh, I mean, we are talking about Dalit literature. I'm trying to go deeper into, you know, that little, maybe as an academic, I'll uh, go a little deeper and then give my viewpoint. and. I'm particularly here because uh, uh, as an academic uh, who was instrumental behind putting Himayana in the books. And I must tell you that uh, uh, this is a chance for me because being an academic, uh, I have been instrumental behind uh, designing courses, whether it is semester uh, system or maybe CBC has now choice this credit system. And now Delhi University has almost, you know, that undergraduate 30 percent, nearly, meaning 30 percent course on the literature related to caste. Uh, and uh, you know, that I must tell you that because uh, I am associated with it, it's possible for uh, you know that uh, Delhi University too. But I must tell you that Delhi University is very orthodox. It is not uh, liberal, democratic. I must tell you. Uh, uh, and having a uh, seminar like this, having a centre like Centre for Dalit Studies, by chance actually it exists. Now, uh, when I say, you know, that I am here by accident, you know, that uh, if you, uh, meaning I am little autobiographical, I am sorry being academic, I should not be, uh, if you know my uh, own life, the way uh, Manoranjan the spoke about that would be the same with me because I wanted to just to be a primary school teacher because I happened to be the first generation of literates. Uh, people can't know that my parents are illiterate. You know, so coming to this level is you know, great. So that's why you know that by chance I'm here and I'm you know that part of uh, syllabus making and kind of so by fault or by accident. Now, uh, so it is an opportunity for me now to uh, reflect on because this is a platform whereby we could go a little uh, you know, differently. It is not that I have to talk about my life, but I'm just trying to uh, bring certain complexities, meaning trying to understand certain complexities by offering a course like this. Uh, this is not just one course because we have also. Uh, untouchable Spring by uh, Kalyan Rao and several others. Even CBC as we have been able to put one chapter of Ambedkar's, uh, you know, that uh, annihilation of caste, and there are several. So, uh, you know, that I'm happy that uh, what we are going to do now, you know, that uh, talking specifically about Ambedkar, let me, uh, you know, because I can uh, talk about other things also, but let's talk about Ambedkar. Now, uh, we have already introduced. Uh, Tapan and me, you know, that by saying in the first uh, day that uh, not only we have Center for Dalit Study, but also I run three different courses on caste and um, Dalit literature. Uh, and uh, you know, that my understanding is that by offering these courses, uh, the uh, you know, that uh, I many there are challenges. I'm uh, not going to bring. Um, those aspects, meaning it is great challenge, they would respond to it. So I'll talk about these three things and then maybe you know, the last, the uh, people who were responsible for bringing out Vimayana as a speech. Now when I uh, talk about Ambedkar, uh, you know that I already started by saying that Ambedkar is little known, uh, not just to our uh, Delhi University student, but across you know, that India, that will happen actually. I never knew Ambedkar uh, before, you know, that uh, uh, coming to maybe college level. And interestingly, my first printed article was on Ambedkar. Uh, I would not agree with Tapan actually, you know, that when Ambedkar centenary uh, happened in 1991-92, before that much more, you know, that we were into it. Maybe because of social location. We wanted not to jump in, into the you know that uh, limelight and kind of thing because by then I was a student of Enfield, JNU. 
And I remember the day Babri Masjid was demolished, we brought out a pamphlet going, you know, running from hostel to hostel. I would not have time here to tell you, but we also made what is called United Dalit Student Forum in GNU. I was chosen the first member. I was the first person to be chosen as part of, you know, that the Central Committee. I, I should not tell all this thing, but just to tell uh, Tapan and, you know, that is very important. So, 91, 92, of course, you know that uh, several things happen, and I also published the first article I got published in a printed uh, a book that I thought I would be now talking about the you know the few points would, which would interest to us, and we have been you know the talking about you know that when we are talking about say subscribing or prescribing a text, and particularly the lit text or Dalit related texts, I have three uh, different things to talk about. One, are we not trying to do what, you know, that Pramod Nair in uh, the book that uh, Judith and, uh, Judith and uh, you know, that uh, Abraham uh, have edited, there is a word called critical literacy. By, you know, that this is what, you know, that uh, we are subscribing for. Or I will go and, uh, you know, that go another extent by saying, you know, that what yesterday Urbosi Butalia used the word, educate the readers. Educate the readers. By subscribing a Dalit text or caste related text, written from different viewpoint, you know, that we are also trying to educate the readers. Or what Toral Gajar. Toral Jatin Gajarwala would talk about in, in her uh, new book called Untouchable Fiction. She talks about you know that what Dalit literature is doing to this society, culture and literature is correct the wrongs right. Several wrongs you know that over millennia, and perhaps you know that where the full fledged character is a Dalit. Malapalli by Unnava Lakminayana and then Mulkrajan and then Chomana Dudi and then you know that several I actually run a course what is called Touchable Tales the representation of Dalit in non-Dalit fiction and we talk about you know that how far the progressive are progressive whether there are agencies or voices given to Dalit in this text so by saying this you know that Correcting the wrongs right, the literature is just one step forward to make efforts to make the wrongs right. Or, I am happy that you know that today um, Paulo Freire has been, you know that at least uh, brought into the context whereby pedagogy of the oppressed of course was. Uh, pedagogy of the oppressed is very important but the last seminal text that Paul of Prayer wrote is Critical Consciousness. Just wanted to tell you. <laughs> critical Consciousness. So, pedagogy of is the beginning of course. Critical Consciousness whereby, by, you know, the, so if suppose I, you know, the, while describing Vimayana in uh, the uh, undergraduate syllabus of Delhi University, if, I, if at all I gave some thought to it, perhaps I went through all this, you know, the dilemma and then try to subscribe to these <coughs> arguments and then, you know, that we might not have prescribed. Now, literature, uh, we can always, uh, always ask, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, that the term popular, what is popular and how popular, you know, that uh, the take that we have described and how popular the Mayana will be. But I must tell you that uh, if we go little detail about uh, uh, the text, it is a very different kind of popular genre, I must tell you. Because, uh, uh, say, uh, the way we read Amar Chitra Katha, it is not the same. Because uh, here, uh, you know that there are uh, not only uh, newspaper clipping and then the, you know, that uh, past and present are, you know, that being uh, hooked up with 
together any kind of you know so i i would not uh, you know that go deep into uh, you know that uh, the nitty gritty of you know that the text but what i want to uh, tell you is that it is a very different kind of genre all together whereby you know that the past and the present uh, the uh, you know that ambedkar is very difficult it is another matter that we have to, you know that but we are also getting feedback so what could be our pedagogies and we all know that uh, teaching a text like uh, i mean any dalit text would require not only you know that literary context but also interdisciplinary approach which means also we have to go to uh, you know the different social sciences uh, you know that uh, uh, like uh, whether we know history you know that uh, social sociology anthropology philosophy law you know that uh, also the language so you know that what i am going to do with c if i am teaching himayan this is the question that i would like to raise and maybe you know that some of the college teachers those who are there would be able to answer that which methods we are engaging right now the last you know that point i would like to talk about is that now that it is part of the course uh, whether we are teaching right or wrong the outcome is that by putting himayana into um, the syllabus of the university we have done really great thing i think by bringing ambedkar into the context whereby at least you know the things should now open up and as we all know that uh, uh, tapan has already uh, suggested that with uh, you know we are now also afraid of delhi university many teachers who tell you that now we have 27% reservation for obc 15 and 7 so now say differently able students particularly visually challenged students who cannot read like this this book so we have many challenges i must tell you meaning i'm whatever sort of feedback i have got but i'm happy that uh, we have been able to put him on you know? so thank you all uh, and beyond uh, so that you know that's such a nice beautiful and important uh, text has been described and i must tell you the messages uh, that you know that uh, the states will give will go a long way uh, I mean. first public appearance of the surgery had to my throat and i can barely speak so i tried to preserve my voice for this one so i'm so sorry speak less and let the makers of the maya which is durga bai vyam internationally renowned artist who is the recipient of the 2008 year she did the book for tara publications for the night life of trees which won the bologna ragazzi award in bologna italy which is the world's biggest children's book subhash vyam who collaborated with her and i met to the first book we did he has got a copy there the first edition turning the pot telling the land this was a response to what is called manavit 2 I lay. I wanted to do the book, and we found Durga Bai, to a common friend, Raja Mohanty from. Uh, this was my first attempt to do something. I mean, I'm not a children's book publisher. I didn't know how to sell this book. Hundred problems. Initially, I went to OUP Orient. I wanted to say, you publish, I help. I'm not. I don't know how to sell this book. Finally, no one did. In fact, I lay. I wanted not now. Yeah. Talk to my wife. Nobody wanted to do it. It came. I said, "Okay, let's try." Then that's how. Right, Durga. I have to ask you something. My name is Durga. 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 My name is Dur
अभी मैं भोपाल में रहती हूँ और शुरू के बाद है तो चूहे माटी सफेद होती है और पीला रंग होती है रामराज मिट्टी जो नर्मदा मैया के जो घटना हुई थी उसके शरीर से हरदी हरदी चढ़ाया था उसको तो हरदी मौका आम की हरदी नीचे मतलब गिरे आए तो हमारा कंठा में मिट्टी था पीला मिट्टी उसे पीला मिट्टी कहते हैं उसमें नाम के और वो जो रहे तो गाय का मट्टा मिलता है काला मिट्टी और परेंडा से मिलते हैं सफेद मिट्टी और एक मिट्टी लाल मिट्टी है ढूटी जंगल से नामते हैं इन मिट्टियों से पहले मतलब बचपन से मैं ढीगना से काम करें शुरू करें बचपन से जैसे मैं दस साल के रहूँ तब से मैं शुरू करें हूँ ढीगना काम तो वही ढीगना से मैं दिवाली त्यौहार है और फागुन त्यौहार है जो शादी भी हम सजावट के नाने काम करती हूँ तो उसमें मतलब बहुत हमारे आज ही रहते सबसे ज़्यादा मतलब ज़्यादा मतलब सीखा रहता हूँ और वही मतलब तो कलर बनाए के रंगोली खेलते थे पहले और अब है आजकल है तो बाजार के कलर लेते हैं सब रंग मतलब पहले से ओरिजिनल रंग वही पहले का जाते हैं और आजकल है तो बदलते जैसे आते आते बदलते हैं जैसे उसके बाद जो रहा है तो ऐसे नहीं करते मतलब जनगण सिंह से हम रहे तो वह जो हमारा भोपाल जाने से हम वो थोड़े पीछे आए हैं भोपाल अभी हमारे घर भोपाल में आए अभी भोपाल में रहते हैं हमारे बच्चे पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं वहीं से और उसके बाद जो रहा है तो जनगढ़ सिंह से आम से पीछे हम उन्हीं से मतलब हेयर पेंटिंग कलर गुरु सर फिर इनसे उन्हीं से पीछे मतलब उन्हीं के साथ हम सीखे हैं अभी तो इसके बाद जो रहा है तो ये किताब सबसे पहले वन टू थ्री बनाए थे तारा वाले के साथ वो एक कंचना करके है मैं प्रकृति मैदान में एक महीने के लाए तो वहाँ मेरे काम देखा था वो कंचना तो उन्होंने कहा ये कहानी में आप काम करेंगे इस करके था हाँ मैं कर रहा हूँ इस करके तो वो जो रहा था वो काम दिया एक कहानी में तो वही सबसे पहले वन टू थ्री थ्री किताब से मैं काम शुरुआत करें राजा मोहंती का एक साइड स्टोरी बता एक किताब बनाने में क्या क्या मुश्किल होते हैं टर्निंग द पॉट से लेके मैं एक आदमी के पीछे था मैं हिंदी में थोड़ा बहुत कम टाइम हो सकता टर्निंग द पॉट भी दुर्गा के हाथ नहीं आने वाला था चंद्रु करके बहुत ही कम्मा कलाकार है जो चलने में बैठा रहता है सिगरेट पीते रहता है बीड़ी उसके साथ में भेजा करती बहुत टॉप ही वॉज अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फाइन आर्ट्स कॉलेज ही रिटायर्ड इज प्रिंसिपल डिस्पाइट यू नो हैविंग ए वेरी बैड रेपुटेशन क्लास क्लास में नहीं पढ़ा आई मीन ही हैपन्स टू बी दल इन ही डजेंट लाइक टू बी टॉप टॉप एज अदर तुम आपको बुला रहे हो डजेंट केयर फॉर एग्जीबिशन जो सो वंस वेन आई वॉज टू बी एसोसिएटेड विद अ जनरल कॉल्ड द दल इन इलिस्ट्रेटेड वन थिंग एंड पीपल टोल मी वाह You got Chandru to do work for you in three hours. I went, smoked a cigarette with him, and he drew right there after he listened to uh, Government Brahmana opening story. He was inspired by it. He drew something, and that's the logo of Nagar. It was after this artist turning the pot, can't change the book, and after him, he took me to the hills. That he used to talk, he used to watch films on my laptop. He never did anything. He said, "Fuck off." That's all. Then, as if the sugar, someone named Manoranjan Ji said, "Boy." गाली भी भाषा होती बहुत अच्छा होता है ये टोल नहीं है ना इन तमो ये सेट एंड देन मैथड क्या यार यार नहीं सेट विल डू लेटर लेटर देयर इज नो टाइम यू कांट डिमांड एनीथिंग वो ही गिव मी वन पीस ऑफ आर्ट दैट्स रेस्ट ही सेट देन समबडी टोल मी राजा मोहन की इज अ गुड इलस्ट्रेटर आई हैव सीन हिज वर्क इज अ एक्सीलेंट वैसे नहीं बात डिमांड वाली बात बीमाइना वाली बात जो है तो हमें अनिल सर ने एक हिंदी में लिख के दिया कि आपको ये बीमाइन किताब करना है तो एक मैडम को किसी को लिखाया सर ने तो वो हिंदी जो है हमें समझ में नहीं आया पढ़े पढ़ाई किया थोड़ा बहुत उसको पढ़ा हमारे समझ में नहीं आया वो कैसे कैसे कहीं कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा था तो 
मैं एक बार अनंत जी को बोला कि एक बार मुझे थोड़ा सा और सरल भेजो ताकि हो सके तो हम समझ में आ जाए तो दोबारा सर जी ने हिंदी करके भेजा मेरे लिए हाथ में भी नहीं रखने देते हैं और पानी दूर से ऐसे डालते हैं और डुला के और जो खाना खाते हैं खाने खाने बैठते हैं उसको वही खाना खा के फिर उसको आराम के साथ सफाई करता है उसका ये छुआ छूत तो हम पहले से जानते हैं इसको कहानी पढ़ने की कोई जरूरत नहीं ऐसे करके जो है तो इसको बताया और वो कहानी जब हमने उसे स्टार्ट किया और वो फिर यहाँ पे आके जो है दिल्ली में हम अनंत जी के ऑफिस में आके काम किया तो उसमें ड्राइंग में कुछ इधर उधर हो रहा था कि कैसे करें कैसे जमाएं उसको क्या करना चाहिए तो कुछ तो अनंत जी ने दो साल तक हमें रोक दिया कि काम जम नहीं रहा है आगे नहीं बढ़ रहा है लेकिन मैं कहा सर से कि ये हमारे ऊपर छोड़ अब मेरे को दे दो ये काम ये काम अगर आज आज अगर नहीं होता है तो ये काम तो हम नहीं करेंगे नहीं कर पाए और जब मैं और दुर्गा और ये हम लोग जब काम स्टार्ट किए और अपने हिसाब से जब शुरू किए और शाम के आके देखा आनंद जी ने क्या है और बाया तो जम गए आप काम करो तो ये ये जो ढिगना है इसमें ढिगना के इसमें हम लोग इसमें हम लोग शुरू किया तो ये काम है ढिगना ये ये ढिगने जो है I I quickly basically traced this. Bichu kya? मतलब बिच्छू के मतकर का बात बोलता है। So I'm just explaining the mini industry panel as we're calling it. Bhimrao is asking his teacher if he can go drink water, and the teacher is saying, is like pointing at him and directly saying, no. Why would you go now? Everyone goes after school. You also go after the bell rings. And then in the bubble below, he's explaining that. The kids all rush to the tap, they don't let me go first, they all drink and by the time I go, the BN has left, he wants to go home and I don't have time to drink water. And then as, as I was saying in the next panel, the, he starts to say, the teacher starts to say, you can see the hands kind of morphing into scissors and he's saying, your hair is so long which is why you're this thirsty, why don't you cut your hair? And that thought bubble that Bhim Rao has with the, with the little drops of water, that says, doesn't he know that uh, Mahars, they, they ref Babas refused to cut the hair of Mahars. And then, and then if you notice what she was explaining, the way that she visualized these bubbles is, the bubble that, the, 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 the speech bubble that's about the teacher is in the shape of a scorpion's tail. Mm -hmm. Because these words are bitter, these words are cruel. And the words of Bhim Rao are the shape of a bird, the bird's beak. Mm -hmm. So that that's the visual language that she chose to use to show how like you know what kind of words were being spoken and how. Representative of the way the, the network has been functioning because um, we have two um, two panelists. I mean, Lindsay and Ashis who were uh, part of the network and on the, the first conferences, you know, right from the start almost. So they have been among the faithful ones. And they have participated in, to, in, in you know, quite a few of the conferences. And then, as the network does, they have brought in other people. So, uh, two of their co-presenters also are new to, the, new to the network and also have been not co-opted because it's not, you know, nothing to do with co-optation. Uh, but they have been brought in in the, uh, in the network as well. And of course, you know, there's also among our faithful uh, participants have very regular attendance uh, and also filming and doing a lot of uh, camera work and photographs for the, for the network and he was also uh, he also did an interview with Jain Charyan who participated in two of the events and the interview which is rather a conversation more than an interview can actually be accessed on YouTube and it's very interesting so I would encourage you to have a look at Vinod's work and uh, listen to Jayan's uh, speaking in conversation with uh, Vinod. So, without much, much uh, further ado, so I will... One and all. The title of my paper is Dalit made red as digitally advanced literature 
as you can see, it's clear over the slide. What our what we project is D of digitally A of advanced and L I T of literature. That's digitally advanced literature or the the post-colonial era has undoubtedly witnessed a surge in the radical literary acting houses. This consciousness remarkably started before the independence itself, where Dalit readers like Ayoti Das, hailing from Madras, now Chennai, started a newspaper called Oru Naya Paisa, and Swami Achutananda from the North initiated his fight with the non Dalits through his newspaper. Now, in this connection, we may have a glimpse of what Ambedkar said about the relation between the press and the oppressed Dalits as early as before the political independence of India. I quote, The untouchables have no press and the Congress press is close to them. It is determined not to give them the slight and it is working its way successfully through all the hours in the recent times. Now, once again, I would like to stop and focus you to the next slide. Spectrum of readers and intellectuals. As in the slide, we could see that there are three, four points, four publication platforms. The first one, when Dalits, they are denied from the print media, they can, if they go to take the help of electronic media, like TV and radio, which is completely filled with the mainstream uh, things, they go over to books, there also they face problems with publications and stuff like that. Then the fourth option, they can very well. to achieve. So if it is a deliberate strategy, a carefully crafted enterprise which has its cover page, forward, reviews made part of the book, a careful choice of illustrations and uh, graphic images, all premeditated to promote a cause. A lot of effort in marketing strategies that have been adopted uh, by publishing houses like Navyana bring these works of resistance in the public domain initiating public dialogue, making it mainstream, facilitating the shift from the periphery to the dominant or the consumerist space. Uh, before I actually begin, could we just uh, you know, switch off you the lights there so that the images are much more clear? Um, you know, because of the constraint of time, I have a lot of images, but we're going to select a few images and study them together. If the medium really works to talk about valid issues, one is that. Second, and even more important, you know, while we was working, while we were working this paper, we realized that for this verbal visual mode to actually function and have an impact on the readers, there has to be a connection established between the writer, the illustrator, and the reader. So the writer who's actually writing or narrating his or her or their tale, because it's all about communal experience. So. Uh, you know, the writer, I believe, is, is actually writing a tale from a point of historical accuracy because that is a lived experience. It's a life lived, right? And um, so to say, uh, the illustrator sort of intervenes with a point of you know, self-reflexivity and together they try to create an image that's supposed to have an impact on the reader, the reader that we really try to sensitize. So these are the two points that you know, we would be reading together now. Um, so, moving forward, as we know, we've already introduced three texts and also a few, you know, there was an apt introduction given in the previous presentation also. Present categories of marginalized to a demonic figure from Hindu mythology. So, in a, in a way, you know, the Shudras have to, can be compared to Rakshasas or Asuras. Um, it is obvious that all should have zipped mouths, but it's also interesting. You know, it's, the zipped mouths, of course, are symbolic of their repressed state, yet the slight unzipping at the end maneuvers an echo of their short voices of rebel and their moment of agency. Uh, such is the power necessary to restore her, and how these two perspectives have been brought together by the Aryans. You know, one is actually Pule's perspective and the other is the, the mainstream normative Brahman's perspective. So this is this is interesting. The imagery used in the three texts is a brilliant example of refashioning the stereotypes for achieving a subversive effect. To tell a tale is a serious task, and to tell a disjointed tale of a fractured self buried under eels of domination can be even more taxing. 
Um, I would quickly want to draw your attention to another image, uh, the gold art, you know, uh, this has been used in the two texts, Tan Pot and uh, Bimaina. Gold art has been traditionally used in folk narratives and children's fiction. For the first time, it plays a motive for resurgence of interest in Dalit works. Um, yes. Um, the writer invokes the tales of the perfect. And the graphic design swoosh, squishing the thousands under him, you know, when his enlarged foot treads the earth. <coughs> the swoosh is undoubtedly the icon of an American product and is indicative of the economic forces at work behind such recognized brands. Now, from the writer's and the illustrator's perspective, the logo signifies not just aspirations and prestige, but also the consumerist exploitation. The onus then lies onto the reader to understand the input. The medium of graphic narrative is one such that can be entrusted to educate, organize, and agitate those who are unfamiliar with this liminal position of the Dalit. Over to you. Thank you. The ancient is not done away with. Um, as with any subculture, there is always a tendency by the market and mainstream to diffuse this radicalism and to trivialize them or homogenize them as just another comic book or just render them into the children's section not meant for serious study or beyond analysis, quoting uh, there's a This is where a combined and collaborative effort between publishers and academic institutions along with readers as well as the distributors is needed to serve a twofold purpose. One is to make the target reader and distributor more aware of the product, the text. The other is to provide uh, handicap. So there is an almost 30 year difference between the two translations. You know, now that is, that is where actually, you know, the uh, problem of uh, Dalit uh, writing and uh, translation and then uh, projection etc. is concerned. Because uh, uh, when the world is, you know, 100 years ahead, uh, it is not that our languages are not modern, but uh, most of the people who create content out of the languages, they actually uh, do not bother that a person who reads this as a Hindi sentence will always read it with Lam and will never be differently about it. So this is, uh, on this note, I begin this and here I have uh, my system. Yes, <clears throat> here with Dalit resistance to caste publishing and orally published rights in the age of mass media and uh, new media. Well, uh, uh, here, uh, uh, first point is uh, orally publicized, you know, so publishing actually is, a, uh, is not a, a modern act in Indian society. So they have always used uh, a voice and uh, a brain has been the recording area where they have, you know, so uh, even satellites can't actually compete with the uh, Indian caste uh, uh, orally public, oral publication networks in Indian caste system are so fast within seconds, you know, a news can reach in the entire village, you know, so I don't think that, yes, I have told my colleague that uh, I will now often meet you through satellite, you know, because when I am there in your uh, surroundings, I am more publicized than the satellites do. So, and this photo I recently took in uh, Pune, uh, 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 just uh, in a 
uh, place. Uh, so this this resort, you know, these are glasses and flowers and all these things actually. So uh, this this uh, this is somewhere you know uh, very much you know uh, related with the the whole idea of uh, Indian caste system. That Indian caste system by default is a system of reservation for five thousand years. You know, so the reservation that we have is very very new. You know, for maybe maybe 60, 70, 80 years, and there is a lot of hue and cry about it. So Indian caste system is, and any caste system or this system of hegemony is a system of reservations. You know, so you reserve people. For example, uh, if we uh, let us say, uh, 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 if we uh, 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 publish uh, vacancies for sweepers in Delhi, how many uh, upper caste people will apply? No, that that's that's a very important question for me. You know, I don't think that they will come forward unless you pay them, you you give them seven pay commission and pay two lakh rupees per month. <laughs> you know, yes, uh, that's very important for them. You know, uh, yeah, uh, and then also you give them respect. You also give them better electronic brooms and all kinds of those things, and you give them, you know, uh, you know, uh, you you give them, you know, a full brahminical status of sweeping. You know, that then they can actually, you know, uh, come to for their job. So it's a system of reservation. Now, uh, this uh, hegemony of the publicized, uh, each member in caste society is publicized for his or her caste status as soon as one takes the phenomenal birth, breath in the socially ordered environment. So I always see this breathing, this problem of breathing, you know, uh, is, is a very problematic area. Uh, many people actually, you know, later on tell about uh, uh, the issues regarding breathing and, uh, uh, and yoga shastra always teaches you pranayama, you know. Uh, but, as soon as you bring that into picture, you need to create actors and rituals. So rituals are not actually just you know traditions, they actually make you actors. So that's why I never look for actors when I make films, you know, uh, because there are so many available all the time, you know, that's why I prefer just go and just pick them up and then show, you know, so you don't have to spend many crore rupees on Shah Rukh Khan or someone else. You see, now, ironically, caste uh, hegemonic uh, relations function better when speech is privileged over writing. You know, so that's you know, speech here is a very interesting you know uh, platform in an unrecordable situation. The situation should be unrecordable. Now, if it is recordable, then it's uh, problematic because uh, then uh, uh, an ambedkar can write a letter of resignation. You know, uh, against you know a prime minister's move. Okay, on certain kind of thing. So, uh, since parliament has come into existence and things have been recorded, therefore, the problem of the upper caste communication has actually become more problematized. And uh, now here we have the comprehending the model of the oral publishing and communication caste social structures is very crucial. Now, first thing is the brains. Now, they are innocent organs by default capable of interactivity. You know, because uh, I think we are all born with uh, this uh, media or this medium which can record, which can access, which can remember, which can think and which can tell and which can receive, all these things can happen. But after this, there comes caste. So caste is, you know, something like talented versus untalented minds, you know. So brain and mind, you know, this, uh, this mind comes into it, basically caste is mind, you know. And that, uh, that mind is, uh, backed by accumulated and distorted knowledge, bankrupt culture, you know. So, if we can understand this, you know, uh, very simple chemistry, okay, among all of us, you know. But at this, but when you talk of the mental networks, you have to bring into caste in Indian society, and it is like a newspaper. I always say caste system is like a newspaper without news based on reporters. Now, there is no news. Now it is a newspaper and there is no news and the newspaper reporters would lie, be fools, spread rumors, draw inferences on baseless premises and use force, violence, atrocity or language to produce classification and reproduction of it. So it's a very interesting kind of publishing actually. No, but you don't have to invest in it. You know, and you don't require you know 70% FTI for that, you know, and it is there. It is published every morning. You know, when the village or the city wakes up, the newspaper is ready. You know, because the caste minds are there, so they are all interconnected. Now, the advanced technology has also blessed them. They can easily, you know, uh, uh, speak and 
uh, state can, will access to awareness and uh, people go for these exhibitions is also an, uh, an exhibition that was arranged for uh, uh, a, a number of sculptures created by one of the Gon uh, Pradhan artists and uh, secondly Bhimayana and Gardner although they are graphic narratives they are two very different kinds so why Gardner follows uh, uh, the, the, the best in graphic narrative mode, the, the way the comic panel is arranged. So it is suited to uh, someone like Aprajita Minan. But then uh, Durga Bai and Subhashi, both of them, when they work on the Mayana, although it is commissioned, it's a collaborative effort, uh, I feel that they made it their own. It, is not, it, it doesn't follow the classic comic panel format, the, the visual uh, stylistic elements that one finds in the comic. They refused to, uh, earlier also they were approached to do comics and they refused to work on uh, uh, the best in uh, comic panel format saying that they cannot entrap people or speeches in a rectangular box. So they are making it their own. They are integrating it and they are bringing their art into it. So it is not something they, uh, they uh, although it may be uh, something introduced from some other context, but then they resituate it within their context. I just want to add on to what they said. I think it's more or less covers up a lot of things. One is, uh, you know, we don't really have big shots really publishing these kind of works. The line is not really as big. And in fact, I wish the publisher was right here. But what extending the argument a little here is what you rightly said, you know. The Maya and Data are two very different projects. One is really <coughs> working or reworking the Bigna, right? The indigenous art form, the Gold art form. Because, you know, we're talking about in Ambedkar and Ambedkar philosophy. So these are two, you know, like, for, for instance, these are two historical projects sort of merged together. On the contrary, I do understand that Gardner is also reworking the, the myth. But you know, it is far more contemporary. In fact, when Anand was right here and was presenting, he did talk about it, how Gardner is not really seen in a similar light. You know, where people would say, oh, what have you done with this? You know? I could interrupt here. In Gardner, if you notice, the Russia of Third Wind, yes. and he also showed the Bauman image from an Amritchat Katan also earlier. Uh, the Dasha of Clark was published by NPT National Book Trust and uh, Children's Book Trust of India. It's a similar story which is told in a similar manner. They take very stereotypical images and they radically take them out of context and this creates an introspection in the reader who already are familiar with the image but what the image is doing in this text is very different it's, from what it's is actually an of. overturning of the myth, you know, on its own, the yes. introduction of the night issue. Just a little just a little bit. I think when you're talking about what is possible, I think it's more about the kind of brief that you get, the kind of insight that the writer really has, and how sort of an understanding is established with an illustrator. And also this format is something where you can, you know, very insidiously bring in a radical or revolutionary or politically charged ideas. And then the reader can navigate and every time you pick up an image you can bring in something. So it depends. It's something you can hide in and then you can read it later. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, I was asking who do you think the readers are? I Other than it's looking at this and getting the kind of perception as you say. Yes. I mean, would they relate to life? Um, would, they, would they relate to all those things? I think the approach would be, what is, when Who is the book for? Yeah. That was the question we were, it's, it's, it's still we are, uh, I'm still I'm trying to understand that question and put it in the conclusion also. We need to identify the reader and also... So shouldn't it be identified by head? Yeah, but the mind, yes, yes, I yes, it's a very awesome We want to get access to that. Now, uh, I, we are, uh, the answer that we have constructed is uh, yes, uh, uh, the, the title of our organization, uh, which will go into this, and I have already gone into this, is still arts moving. Okay, and we are going for uh, 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 using the digital technology, uh, uh, particularly the new media. Now, the entire platform for the new media is not more than in India, let us say, five lakh rupees. 
not more than 5 rupees right now ok and if you open a publishing house then it is something else ok now for this this is very flexible today you, you show it and if there are things to be improved tomorrow you, uh, in the night you can sit and work, work on the timeline and change the things and go there tomorrow now in a book you can't do that so book in a way you know I am not against book culture or printing culture or that the all these autobiographies they have had a very a very important impact on that but one thing is that this is becoming a kind of accumulated thing and where certain uh, tendencies are also coming up you know uh, of, of becoming popular and famous and all like that these things are also there so as soon as you now use the uh, this, uh, uh, the new technology or particularly the new media you know that can actually create a bank of uh, autobiographies uh, which are orally produced and uh, they can be accessed from anywhere of the world and they will actually uh, go to the people who, who about whom you can't actually expect for example one of the films that we have produced uh, I just uh, take a minute and tell you uh, we are working on the project Mahabharata and we will have 20 episodes in which we are using uh, Dalits as actors oh, no. and in that you see this is basically mortuary you know mortuary is very much related to you know the Dalit community you know in a hospital okay so that mortuary is Mahabharata Kurukshetra so for us Kurukshetra is the mortuary you know in that mortuary you know there are five dead bodies the first film is, is there and it is well edited and ready to be screened okay uh, uh, the point is that uh, in that we have a, a child you know and uh, and other characters so we went to the you know we had good friendships with our uh, you know uh, Dalit friends you know who, who, who work around us so, so we could locate you know our characters or we could locate our actors and we could actually now that ch the child and his own parents and the entire Basti came when the shooting was taking place in the American University you know and then they all went back and the film was ready and now wherever we screen we will call them and we will have that so there is another kind of inclusion in publishing so publishing should not be you know a kind of mediated thing in which you have a chain of people and at the bottom and the top and there, there are a lot of disconnection and problematization as he was talking about thank you so much Raj, I missed a little point. Sorry, Raj. You know, I will only, uh, in a way, in a small suggestion, uh, the kind of uh, uh, project this, uh, and if you can uh, look at you see the kind of publications, and they are in thousands and thousands in Maharashtra, for instance, they are also illustrative of that. Their audience is quite different. They are distributed, they are sold, they are bought by Dalits, they are worked by Dalits, there are fine illustrators, I'm not familiar, very familiar, but uh, uh, that is already been, uh, Sharila had uh, worked on some of those uh, uh, texts that are available, how they are very different kind of projects, but the question that has been raised here tonight is that what is the target of the project?